Hey, what's up everybody? I've been chasing this cool little frog in uh, Costa Rica in the forest here this morning and I just wanted to do a quick review of uh, this, a couple macro lenses. Okay, actually not. <laughs> We're just in my kitchen and I went out last night, was date night, we're spilling a little bit of water and we bought a little frog because I have eight different options for macro photography lenses here and I want to do some practical real life kind of photos here to show you the difference in sharpness. Here are the lenses that we're going to review. We have the, um, starting from the cheapest, we have a reverse ring, oh right here, we have a reverse ring that goes on your lens and all it's going to do is it's going to allow you to mount any old lens backwards to get a macro perspective. Then we have a bellows, um, this basically put lens here and camera here and extend it to get a macro. And then we have two different kinds of extension tubes. The Kenco extension tube costs about 150 bucks. It's one that's really well regarded but more expensive than the cheapy here that was only 40 or 50 bucks. And I'm going to see how they compare. And we're going to compare the, the Canon 500D close focus filter that works on Canon or Nikon. We're going to compare the Nikon 105mm macro, the Tamron 90mm macro, and the Sigma 150mm macro. So if you did the math, this, lens, this video was extremely <laughs> expensive, but on improved photography, I want to do the very best uh, gear reviews that you can find anywhere. I want to make sure you know exactly what's the best option for the bang for your buck and the very best quality. So let's get started. All right, I spent several hours with these lenses testing sharpness, shooting serial and pencils and all the all kinds of things. The most important thing is do not choose the reverse ring. It came in at the bottom of the test and we're going to kick it out at this point. It was just so horrible. There was optical banding in there. Uh, it just it looked like there was a milk smudge on my lens. So that one's out. Now in the middle of the pack came in the, the bellows, the close focus filter, and the extension tubes from both companies. Uh, they actually did very, very well. And when you're zoomed out or a moderate zoom, you can't tell the difference between any of those options and a dedicated macro lens in terms of sharpness. But when you zoom in all the way to 100% and you look at that very, very fine detail, there was a difference between the extension tubes and the dedicated macro lenses. It was just just crisper, tiny details with the dedicated lens. So if you want the very best you can get, yeah, there's a reason to get a dedicated macro lens. Otherwise, just pick the extension tubes or a close focus filter. In the ease of use test, there was again a pretty good divide among the lenses, with two lenses really failing out at this point. One option was the Kenco extension tubes. As you can see in my tests, I tried head to head, I would use a 20 millimeter extension tube from Kenco on it, on the camera, and it wouldn't focus, switch to the other one and it to from the to the cheap knockoff and it would focus immediately. Now obviously I tested moving the camera forward and backward as well. And no, it, it just I was not getting reliable autofocus results with the Kenco extension tube. And believe me, I tested this multiple, multiple times to make sure that I wasn't just didn't have the distances quite right, things like that. The Kenco extension tubes just had an issue with finding focus properly. So they are now kicked out of the test. The other thing that I'm going to kick out of the test is the uh, bellows. The bellows was so hard to use. I, it was just a pain in the rear. Uh, the, you know, some photographers still use a bellows, but not a whole lot do. Um, it, it's just it, they're very cumbersome to use. Um, and this one, this particular one that I'm using, just didn't hold tight enough. Things would always unscrew and stuff and uh, but 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 bellows in general it, it was just very difficult to use so those two just got cut out now the rest of the pack I would really put on an equal standard in terms of ease of use the extension tubes will autofocus just like the dedicated macro lenses will and the close focus filter um, I would probably put at the bottom of this pack 
but did okay, but you have to be just right at the perfect distance for that close focus filter to do its job. So it wasn't as good um, in terms of easy use, but it was fair. At this point of the test, we really only have a few options left. We have all three of the dedicated macro lenses and the budget extension tubes. Now, a note about the close focus filter, it actually does a really nice job. The photos were pretty sharp comparable to the close focus filter. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive at $150. But I just feel like the choice between the, the extension tubes and the close focus filter, you got to give it to the extension tubes. Uh, this is a third the cost, just as sharp, and I think you have a little bit better versatility for more magnification. That's one knock on the close focus filter is it just doesn't have quite as much magnification. So I'm at 50 millimeters on my 24 to 70 and I'm using the 20 millimeter extension tube here. So let's see if we can get him in here and see how close we have to be. So in this and other tests, taking pictures of the frog and flowers and other things all around, just typical macro photography subjects, I would say that the 150 millimeter macro was actually two telephoto for my personal preference. I found the 90 and the 105 both did very similarly. I think the 105 is kind of a sweet spot in terms of focal length for macro photography, but the 90 was very similar in terms of, of, of backgrounds. Now for close focus distances, it was really nice to have the 150 where you get a longer distance from the subject to the lens. All right, we've done tons of testing and many more tests that didn't even make the video, but I, when it comes right down to it, you got to make a choice. And so for me, the very first thing you should get for a macro option is these cheap extension tubes. They're incredibly inexpensive. The quality was excellent, better than the more expensive extension tubes. And if you later decide you do want a dedicated macro lens, you can use the extension tubes with it to get even more magnification. So definitely everybody should buy extension tubes as your first macro option because you'll want them even if you choose the dedicated. But if you are gonna choose between a dedicated macro lens, um, these are all really good options and that's why I put them in this test because they're all very good. The biggest, the biggest deciding factor should be for you, what focal length do you want? I thought that I, wa I wanted more focal length because you do get a better subject to, to lens distance with the longer focal length. But the backgrounds were just too narrow and I couldn't include enough of the color in the, in the backgrounds, in the bur blurry portion of the photo with the a, a lens that was too telephoto for all of the different things that I tested. That's just my personal preference, even though it's a great lens. Now between the Nikon 105 and the Tamron 90, I'm picking the Tamron 90. Why? Because it's way less money. And in terms of optical quality, I mean, the differences were microscopic. <laughs> I mean, the, I, I spent so much time on this and I am picky about lenses. I mean, I've spent thousands on, on different lenses and, and testing charts from different companies. And I, I really want to know I have the very best stuff. Uh, but honestly, I mean, it's a very small difference in focal length. They, this lens, both have great uh, image stabilization. Uh, they, they're just really nice. The, the Tamron is a little bit lighter weight. Uh, it doesn't feel as built like a tank as the Nikon, but I would still pick it. Um, I would definitely save the money because the differences between them just aren't significant. So my two picks are the cheap extension tubes and the Tamron 90 millimeter macro. To find the exact links to these lenses, go to improvephotography.com slash macro lens and I'll have lots more there for you so you can get the exact right lens and, and uh, read more on the review. But before we leave, let's go to one last test between these lenses. All right, Walter. What's the best macro lens? All right, thanks for joining me in this video. Be sure to subscribe to the Improved Photography YouTube channel and I have tons more reviews like this coming up for you.